Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to take a look at this thing here. This is the Vifly R130. Oh, sorry about all the grass, I'm afraid uh, this has been getting a lot of flying in over the last couple of weeks. And that's because this is the most fun I've had under 250 grams. Yep, you heard that right. It's a 130 millimeter quad that is just under the legal limit in lots and lots of countries and also means that you could fly this thing without having to register it. Now, the actual thing itself weighs a little bit less than 250 grams. So if you are canny and smart with your battery choice, and this thing supports both 3S and 4S batteries, but more about that in a second, you could get this thing in the air for well under 250 grams, which is fantastic. Now, we have looked at quite a few little quads recently, and one of the things that I'm on a mission at the moment about is to find a really nice set of quads that are gonna be under that 250 gram limit, but won't compromise too much on what you get in the package. Because this is at 130 millimeters, the 130 to 160 millimeters, in my opinion, is the sweet spot for this kind of brushless quad, because any smaller than that, what you have to start to do is add more and more blades onto the props in order to fit it inside the chassis. And in fact, one of my other favorite quads that we looked at recently had five blades on there, great little quad but you paid the price in terms of the flying time because you lost a lot of efficiency now this is a really nice halfway house these are actually dal props i think they're uh, three by 4.5 bull nose props and they work beautifully on this model so a couple of things about the specs before we show you how it comes in the box this is actually the bind and fly version. There are three versions available in bind and fly. The first is FR Sky, which is what this is. Then we have the DSM X, and there's also a Fly Sky version too. But you can also buy it as a ready to fly version if you want it to come with a radio. Now, I, of course, have bound this to my trusty Tyrannus radio and have been flying it like that. F4 based flight controller, integrated on screen display, 700 TVL line CMOS camera at the front. Gosh, this thing has uh, has a lot of... Well, I should have really cleaned it for the video, shouldn't I? Apologies for that. The CMOS camera we'll talk about is probably the only thing that isn't fab on this model. It's very serviceable. It gives a pretty good video, uh, but we'll talk about that in a second. Has little LED lights at the front. Those little dinky things, if you can see them, are actually white lights. It has one single red light at the back with a blue flashing light that shows you the status of the bind. The VTX transmitter can go between 25... 200 and 500 milliwatts, which is really nice. There's some really nice design touches here. It's three millimeter carbon fiber, and the arms are quite stubby. So that three millimeters has taken quite a lot of crashes and bumps, and I haven't even broken a prop yet, he says, touching wood. The setup for it is relatively straightforward. There is a USB connector at the side, comes pre-flashed with beta flight, has a button on the back which is there for binding and the button on the front is there to change the channel for the video transmitter. There's a full list of channels in the manual and then if you long press it, it allows you to change the actual power of the video transmitter as well. The motors on here are branded as ViFly. They're 1306 4100 kV motors and it'll support both 3S and 4S batteries. So there's lots of things on here that look and feel like a standard 250 style quad. Now, I tried to start taking it apart, have a look inside, after about seven or eight screws started to lose the will to live because it is built like a Swiss watch. But what I did notice as I was pulling all the screws out is they all have thread lock on them. So that's, for me, usually a good indicator that the manufacturer, when they built these things, has been taken a bit of care. Now this board on the top with the XT30 connector, again, yes, it's XT30. This seems to be more and more of the standard these days for these little quadcopters rather than the XT60. Um, I had to end up flying mine with a little XT60 adapter that I made. Uh, but this doesn't come with a battery. It, uh, as When you get it and you open the box, first thing you'll see is going to be the manual. Then you take off the top layer of foam and under that, there are the spare set of props and you also have the model all pre-built, ready to rock and roll. You don't have to do anything up. It's all built, the props are on there too. In addition, you get some extra feet, you get some foam pads and you get some additional spare screws as well. 
If we look at a couple of the details on here that I'm pretty impressed about, it does actually have a buzzer. You can see that down in there. So uh, you can set that up in beta flight. So if this thing comes down in any kind of length of grass at all, which because it's so small, um, hopefully you can kind of see that. If I bring my fat shark goggles in, so you can kind of get an idea of the size of it. Any size of uh, grass at all, it kind of disappears. So being able to sound the buzzer if uh, if it does come down and cartwheel across the, uh, the field. This board at the top is actually the speed controllers. And the speed controllers are up here in the airflow for cooling, covered by what feels like a metal plate. Uh, looks like it's powder coated or something. And all the rest of the electronics are actually hidden away inside the body out of harm's way. Now that's a really, really clever idea because it means that the ESCs that get all the thermal challenges delivering all the power to these little motors are up here in the airflow getting nice and cool and everything else is nicely hidden away. It's a really smart idea. A couple of cool things that I really liked uh, by the side of the camera at the front. So if you're flying at dusk, in the daytime they're so small and uh, easily covered up if you're not looking at them straight on but in just time you can see them and they help with orientation if you're flying line of sight. To bind the model is very straightforward there are only two actually controls here on the side the one at the back is the bind button you need to put the radio control into bind press and hold the bind button and just plug the battery into the model and it'll turn on and it'll bind and you'll be good. Uh, I'd recommend removing your props until you're happy that it's all set up properly. The little button at the front, this is there, a short press will change all of the channels, so it'll go through all the channels in band A, then all the channels in band B, then band C, etc, etc, and round robin. And if you press and hold it, it'll change the power settings here on this little transmitter to 25 to 200 to 500 milliwatts. So again, you can stay legal if you want to, or you can change the power up to 200 or 500 if you don't. So let me show you what it looked like as I plugged it into Betaflight. The version of Betaflight flashed on this thing is uh, the Omnibus F4 target. It's uh, version 3.1.7, so reasonably recent. I'd recommend once you have it all bound, going into the receiver settings, making sure that everything's working, that the middle values are all at 1500, that throttle, the pitch roll and your roll moving in the right way round. You might have to change the channel map if it isn't, but that should work. By default, it's delivered for stick arming, and that's holding the throttle to its lowest right-hand position. I am not a big fan of stick arming anymore, so what I would recommend is going into the modes and setting up the modes where you want to do it. This is how it came by default, so it wasn't armed by a switch. I would really change that, I think, not having the switch arming, particularly when you're going to be running the props and potentially landing in grass that's going to foul those props, you want to be able to kill it at an instant, or ideally what I do is I tend to kill the motors a couple of inches above the ground and let it just fall into the grass. Air mode was only turned on for the top position and we had angle mode in the low position with horizon in the middle and then the top position was the fail safe and the beeper. So I'd recommend spending a bit of time just playing with that as well. Everything else in beta flight seemed to be setting up and working great. So here's a little bit of flying footage. Now this is on a 3S battery. It's hovering well below 50% throttle. And this thing is fantastic. It actually does what you want it to do. It flies really well. The camera, as you can see, this is a slightly overcast day. It's at the beginning of September, so the light isn't fantastic. And it's handling it all right. The contrast is pretty good. It isn't blowing out the ground, so it's not bad at all. And it is allowing me to see the goalposts, to fly through those, and have a fantastic ton of time. Getting about five or six minutes out of an 850 milliamp 3S battery, and that's not bad for this size of craft. So, in summary, what do I think? Well, this is the first Vifly model that I have tried out, and the initial impressions were very good, and using it and abusing it for a couple of weeks, those initial impressions have got even better. The build quality is fantastic. The way this little thing takes knocks is great. There isn't as much weight, of course, or energy in crashes, but with a 4S battery, this little guy can really, really be very, very quick indeed. And even when it has a tumble or hits something, uh, I'm getting away with it. Modern Specs is an F4-based flight controller, comes with Betaflight, has that inbuilt on-screen display. Uh, the display that we just saw in that test footage is the 
default settings for the on-screen display. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the artificial horizon or those other things, but you can go into the tab in beta flight and configure that just as you would any other quad. 3S and 4S capable. On 3S, it is fantastic fun. On 4S, it is a beast. So do think about that and do think about the weight of the battery. Remember how much this thing weighs on its own. So you're looking for a battery pack that's going to give you just under the 250 gram limit if that's where you're headed for if you want to sneak those limits for registration. There's only a couple of things on here and I am kind of nitpicking I guess a little bit with here. The CMOS camera, the quality is okay. It would have been nice if it had been a CCD camera. There are some really beautiful little CCD cameras around from people like Runcam, from people like Foxeer that would fit in that space. And they also don't provide an easy way for you to mount another camera if you wanted to. Both of those would have been nice options because I have cameras here that I'd have probably wanted to try. The other thing to be aware of, of course, is because of its size, there isn't an easy place to mount your action camera. You might be able to strap something like a Mobius on top of the battery, but then you're probably going to push it over the 250 gram limit. There is no place for something like a GoPro or something like one of the new Foxy 4K cameras. So for me, at the moment, this is my favourite sub 250 gram quad, simply because they, they thought about it, the way that the motors are spaced, the props that they've used, the variable power, and the way this thing flies is very, very familiar and feels great for those who are used to 250 or 330 class quads. So if you're looking for a 250 little quad that is going to be under the weight limit and keep you legal in the country that you're in, this is definitely worth a look. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.